Juanitosville, we are back. It was my birthday week last week, and man, I went on some crazy hikes. My legs are killing me. I'm telling you, every year those mountains just get steeper and steeper. But uh, we are going on, coming up, creeping up on 50 episodes of jury tutorials and uh, process videos. And I'm telling you guys, it has been a ride. I have learned a lot over the past 50 uh, process and tutorial videos. And uh, I hope you guys have too. I'm telling you, I have something special, special planned for number 50. I am teaming up and doing a collaboration with my friend Noble Art Dimensions. Uh, she's out of Arizona. She is cooking up some really BA turquoise stones. Uh, and I'm going to take one of those stones and make a bracelet that is encompasses all the skills that we have developed up to this point. Up to leading up to number 50 and hers will be number 50 we're going to do some stamping we're going to do rivets we're going to do texture we're going to do uh castellated bezel we're doing adornments we're doing rails we're doing the boom clasp which is this clasp right here guys if you guys haven't seen it in my other video please feel free to go check it out it is right here how to make the boom clasp People have said, you need to patent that. You need to. I'm not going to patent that. This is for the people, man. This is for anybody who wants to have a cool clasp. And I'm telling you, with, when it's this wide, it doesn't really even almost need to have this. That's not going anywhere, you know, unless you're fighting somebody at the at the bar, you know. And even then, it probably wouldn't. You shouldn't fight with your jewelry on, guys. You shouldn't fight. Fight. No violence. Violence is always bad. So. That's going to be accumulation of a great piece that I'm going to do a collaboration with Noble Art Dimensions. Shout to Noble. Shout to Inspiring Metalsmiths Jewelry Group. Oh, man. It is. It's a great group. And I am an admin on that group. I don't know how or why, but they asked me to be admin, and I am an admin. Uh, probably for my charms. Probably for my charms. Uh, but we have some great people in the group that are we have experts. We have people who have been in the game 50 years, longer probably. Um, and we have a lot of beginners. So that's what this group is for, is really people that are getting into it and they want to expedite their uh, jewelry skills. So, so this piece right here that I want to do uh, today, this is number 49, episode 49. And uh, I make these rings that are basically scrap that's left over from when I make uh, bracelets like this. Now, as you can see, uh, the end of the bracelet is kind of skinny. So when I start with the, with the, I usually start with a flat piece of sterling. Uh, in this case, I think this is 20 gauge. And I put the copper rails on it, which really strengthens it. And once you put all the adornments on it, I mean, that is, this bracelet right here is, I think it's about four years old. It's about four years old. And uh, it's still doing well. But uh, so when you make these uh, skinny at the end, often there's a piece of scrap left over. And I have devised a really interesting and fun way to make ring shanks out of those scraps. So into our uh, scrap pile here, we have, I know I have a couple of them because I found them earlier. A couple of the pieces like this. A couple pieces like this. And essentially, it's very simple, guys. Um, you know, you, what are you going to do with that? I don't know. It's scrap. But hey, what can we do is we can layer them like this. It's skinny in the middle like a ring shank sh comfortably should be. A little skinnier down here. So you can make a fist. But that's basically the idea. But I want to point this out, guys. This is Seraphonite. Uh, I learned somebody on the internet. Uh, several people, actually, in my jewelry group told me this is seraphonite probably russian seraphonite from a mine that is no longer open and the this stone is becoming increasingly rare so uh yeah we got to make a really cool band for this i think i'm going to use this as the back plate i already cut this out the bezel so we're we're kind of along a little bit along the way here for this but I'm going to try and make this video a little bit short so you guys don't get bored because I know I talk a lot, but I, and I don't want to be boring. I want to be um, 
I want to be uh, helpful. So what we're going to do, guys, is I think I'm going to texture one of these with my cool texture, in, like in this uh, video right here. Um, I'm going to texture one of these, and it's going to be on the outside, and the inside one's going to be clean, clean looking, like just regular silver. So I think that'll be a good, contra a cool contrast. But yeah, guys, we're going to make a ring shank for this seraphonite stone out of scraps, because you know me, I like my scraps. We're going to turn this uh, excess into success. Ooh, you like that? Let's go. All right, you crazy kids, we're here right now. We're gonna do the texturing on this. I sanded this so that it's just clean and to accept the texture. And then right here, guys, I don't know if you guys can see this, I have the bezel. Now, I used to be a proponent of soldering the inside of the bezel, but I found it a little bit difficult to get that solder nice and flat, and it was making little gaps near the the join of the stone when I was trying to, when it was time to set the stone, there would sometimes be a gap right on either side of the join because that solder would ball up and I, I, it wouldn't uh, flatten perfectly. Lately, I've been doing uh, solder on the outside of the bezel because and then I can put it on my finger and put it on my sandpaper and then it was becoming, it was a little bit easier to clean. So uh, I changed, I'm now team outside of the bezel. So we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and do this in front of you guys so you guys can see. I'm going to use hard solder, friends. Oh, man. Yes, we just kind of feather it. Just kind of feather it. Cook that, that flux off. And then I'm going to get a small piece. A very small piece, actually. Okay, I almost threw a fit for no reason. Okay, yeah. Okay, my friends think I'm really mature. By the way, guys, how old do you guys think I am? Somebody said that I had a young voice. I don't know what that means. But you guys can put it in the comments. How old do you think I am? Yeah, I wonder. If anybody asks you how old you are, just tell them. You're too young to be. If you're asking me that question, you're too young to be talking to me. Go away. That's done. Let's just go like this and believe in that. And let's just keep moving, friends. We're here. We're at the party. We're gonna go a little bit of flux on that. Get a little higher heat. We're gonna cook the flux off. I'm gonna grab my tray here that I uh, that catches my sawdust. I'm just gonna move some big pieces out of the way. And I hope you guys are in frame. I'm just gonna grab. You guys are gonna find out how old I am just by my references. Which is fine. If you know the references, then I like you. You know, we gotta stick together, man. Any fellows out there uh, used to be uh, Rambo fans? Okay, any Rambo fans? Is that Does that help? Ninja movies? Oh, did you love the ninja movies? Oh, my poor sister. After every time we watch a ninja movie, me and my brother wanted to practice our ninja moves. And, you know, Charlene had a, and it would always start the same. Let me just try something. It's not going to hurt. It's not going to hurt. <laughs> I promise it won't hurt. No, she knew better. She knew better. It always hurt. Oh, poor girl. But, uh, she loves me again now. I had to apologize probably when I was about. 918 I I just took her to the other room and I told her, "Man, girl, I'm so sorry for all the torment I put you through when we were kids. I was just a big brother and I didn't have all the answers." I told asked her if she'd forgive me and she said yes and I gave her a hug and now every Christmas she gets to bring up what a crappy brother I was. Not crappy, but, you know, all the all my tactics. Tactics. I like to say, hey, I thought you forgave me. She's like, I did, big brother. And then she starts having her little cocktails, and then here comes the stories. Oh, man. Well, I guess I deserve it. I deserve it. But I love her. I love her to death. And she tells me I'm her favorite brother, which is, I feel sorry for my other brothers. But 
I'm just glad that she like feels about me like that, you know? All right, guys, so we're just gonna keep going on this until it looks like uh, shiny snow. Shiny snow. Okay, 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 okay. If you do it too much, then it turns into like liquid, and that's a cool look too. Don't let it don't let it cool all the way off on that block, or it'll stick to the block. All right, guys. So we have this. We have the bezel. Feels pretty good. A little little sanding will do it some justice. Okay, friends. When I'm getting my bezel ready, I typically like to get it on a flat block and just kind of just sand the bottom until I see fresh silver along the whole bottom rim. Does that make sense? It's black, and then there's fresh silver kind of exposed. If there's any uh, divots or anything like that, you'll look and it'll be kind of dark. And then, I when you do that, sometimes you misshape in it. So make sure that you're going back on your stone, just getting it nice a nice fit again so that it's the nice shape. Because if you miss shaping it, you're not getting your, you're not going to be able to get your stone in there. Set it on there. When I crouch down, like Igor, and look and make sure I have a nice, pretty nice seal. So this is a 22 gauge backplate, guys. Uh, just a piece of scrap. I use my scraps so much, I'm running out of big scraps. So if anybody has big scraps out there that they don't like. You want to give me the homie hookup price i'll buy it from you i know a lot of people uh, send them to the, the send them to places to get mixed uh melted down i haven't had enough scraps to melt anything down yet because uh i use all my scraps most of my scraps you can get money for your scraps by sending them in to get melted or i think you can get more money if you use your scraps for art and then sell the art you're gonna get more more bang for your buck, friends. And in this economy, any dollar you can get, you better hold on to, buddy. You know how it is out there. It's hard out here for a pimp. Turning the heat up a little bit. Big circles. I can't drive 55. Sorry. Who can? Who can drive 55? I don't know if I like that genius wire. I don't think I do. I don't know if I've done a bezel on a genius wire. Usually I use my tripod or just do straight on the block. I'm gonna go straight on the block. That way if I wanna press, cause I wanna show you guys, whenever I, uh, when once the solder starts to melt, I'll, I'll press lightly on the top of the bezel. Here's a technique. Let's press. Amigos, I uh, put it in the pickle and everything sealed all the way around except for this back corner. So I put a little bit of flux on there and I'm gonna grab another piece of medium solder. And I'm just gonna tuck it right into that back corner. And uh, well, I'm just gonna hope for the best. I'm gonna really try to focus on underneath. whole thing kind of filling it filling the vibes hope you guys had a, are having a good summer getting out there and getting some exercise i'm telling you man for my birthday all the hikes i did i don't know if you guys count do have the watches that count your steps twice this twice last week i walked thirty thousand steps both on hikes and that was pretty intense Okay, that solder went right where I wanted it and we're good. So that's how simple that's gonna be. 30,000 steps, friends, twice. Uh, yesterday I did another big, huge hike to Courthouse. Maybe I'll show a picture. It, oh man, I'm telling you, I live in the most beautiful place in the world. I am spoiled. All right, guys, so I'm going to uh, get ready to do the shank. So let's move on to that step.
Alrighty, one of those This is where we're at. I did uh, texture this. So here I filed underneath both of these and I need this to be about 50 millimeters for a size seven. I would like a size six, between a size six and seven and a half, I'd be cool with. It's kind of like an average size. I, I make a lot of size eights. So let's do, let's try to something for the skinnier fingers out there. The technique typically I use guys, and I've done a lot of these, is I will focus the solder on the tips. So I'll solder this tip and I'll solder this tip because what I have done in the past is I'll put solder here and then it'll bleed out into the piece. And I was like, how do I get it? And then the solder needs to be just in this little skinny area and on the other side, the skinny area. And it's harder to put solder just in the skinny area. So what you do is you just tin, spread the solder, tinning along the, along the tips. And then the rest of it will kind of take care of itself. So we're gonna focus on that. I'm gonna give it the old Chad Parker. And we're going to tin the tips. Once I put the solder down, I'll grab my pick so that I can easily spread it like cake frosting. Because I, in my in my other life, I like to I'm a beat maker, so I make some beats. Not the best beats in the world, but pretty decent beats. And I like to make jewelry beats because they're just kind of more chill. So I make the jewelry beats. Here we go. We're getting some action on this solder right here. So when you guys hear the beats, guys, when I say, this is a boom beat, how we start the videos. That's my stuff, friends. I'm sure we got a lot of musicians out there. Artists are often musicians too. Like media artists are often in the music world in some way. Or right, painters, often, you know, instruments, poets. Very rarely do you just get somebody who's just a silversmith or, um, goldsmith that you often play instruments to and paint and write poetry and you know living living life with rose colored glasses like most of us artists do which i'm fine with hey it, my ignorance is blissful don't ruin it let's go like this okay we're moving we're moving we're shaking we're waking we're baking let's go around the side okay I see some action I see some action okay I think we're good <sighs> sorry that was so amateur but I'm not a professional I just play one on the internet here we go friends look at that this is gonna be the inside of the shank. This is gonna be the outside. We have texture with clean juxtaposition or contrast. And uh, let's clean this up and get this ready to uh, turn into our cool shank. Okay, here we are, out of the pickle. At this point is usually, let's go for a little snippage. Little snippage. Maybe we'll bring our file over here and uh, let's give it, pull on it a little bit. And we want this to be about 50 millimeters and it is about 50 millimeters. So it's gonna be about a size, we know at, at 20 gauge, 54 millimeters is size seven. So with a little gap there, I bet we're gonna be about size six and three quarters, which is gonna be a nice size for a, a smaller finger. Like I said, I make a lot of pieces for big fingers and I'm gonna, I need some pieces for small fingers. So we're gonna kind of go with that. Let's do this right now. Let's, what do you guys say? Put this on the mandrel. So from this point, friends, I can typically uh, finger, finger finagle it. Okay, so right here. So 
So right here, amigos, we uh, I typically will just do that. And it looks pretty, pretty rough on that side. But I file. I file and get it about where I want it. I've never really been good at getting the boom right in the very, very center of... I try to get it. I got it in the center this way center, but I could have moved it down a little bit. But uh, when you're out here making your dreams come true, sometimes your logo is a little off. Just pull on it. Looking at it. Eyeballing it. All right, guys. So this is what we're looking at. Probably going to soften that up a little bit on those edges. And then we are going to get ready to set this shank. I got to point out this one little tip right here, guys. Um, one thing that I did learn through my adventures is if we can get that to sit as flat as possible. So what I do is I file the inside of that. But then I also uh, file to make a little table this part of the shank. And if you can see... It's already starting to create a little table right there. Can you see that in the light? A little table. So that the solder has a, a, a nice surface area to flow to. So just try to give yourself the best opportunity to be successful as possible. Um, so I'm just softening this uh, bezel back plate just so that I don't have to do it later. Because once, once this is on there, it's kind of hard to get like an even... Just trying to think ahead so i don't really know i'm not really in love with any direction of this as far as which direction this up or this this up or this up use my dropper well i think since i'm here i'm going to teach you guys this one little trick i learned i've done this from my uh, instructor melanie klein she is a master silversmith my friend and my mentor get pencil and if you have your stamp your maker's mark put like a little put pencil around it it'll keep the solder from flowing into your maker's mark uh huh i know watch it's gonna work too because i've done it enough to know that it works okay guys i think i believe in that take an extra couple minutes guys right here to just really make sure that you're happy with it Let's, let's make our dreams come true, friends. I'm going to go medium solder on this. Everything up to this point has been hard solder. Balling up the solder using my handy dandy rotating table. I'm going to focus on one corner, probably this close one. And I'm going to, the, the solder will want to follow the heat as we know. So we're going to heat up everything. But when we're gonna, when we're when we're getting to that that feeling, we're gonna bring the heat over here. We're gonna flash heat over here. Okay, it did. Okay, nice. That was it. It just went. So we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. The solder on the back plate, right next to the shank. Okay. 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 Um, I think the solder went over here. And it did. Okay. All right, friends. So the solder hit the front corner and then because it was on the back plate and the shank and I kept the shank and the back plate trying to get to the rise to that perfect temperature right at the same time, the solder went. If you get the shank too early, hot too early then it'll ride up the shank um, and if you get the bottom heated too early then it'll pull into the back plate so the key is uh getting them both at the same time and it just takes practice guys it take that's all you can do is just practice keep practicing keep practicing and the more you do it and the more you get to you 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 can look at the silver and feel the silver and just know the timing and you'll feel like like you'll know it you'll just know so let's look at that guys what do you guys think a nice solder line on the right there blam a nice solder line right on the inside right there 
blam. Uh, no solder pull at the bottom. There will be some cleanup as always. You know what I mean? But this is actually probably the best one that I've ever done. And I'm glad you guys got to see that because it doesn't happen like that very often. But it will, as I keep practicing, it'll, I'll be more consistent. And that's the goals, right? Friends, alrighty, let's uh, put this in the pickle and take a look what we got. Alrighty, Juanitosville, here we are, man. Look at this. What do you guys think? About that texture. I think that's what's going to be, man. Seraphonite. That is going to be a BA ring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, polish this, or maybe Millie will polish this, and then I will set the stone last. But uh, this is the gist of it. Uh, setting these square stones, you start with the corners, and then you kind of just work work your way around. That's how you do those. But uh, yeah, next time you see this will be its music video debut. <sighs> Thanks for the adventure, friends. Number 49. Stick around for number 50. 50 is going to be the most epic Probably one of the most epic, actually, videos that we've ever done. Because um, it's going to uh, be a combination of all the different skills. Uh, we're going to do it all into one one awesome bracelet for uh, Noble uh, Dimensions. She is the doing the stone work. And I am doing the silver work. And it's going to be a piece just for her. So, yeah, man. I'm out here collabing, making our dreams come true. Uh, as always, if this video had any value to you, please push subscribe, uh, hit the bell notification so that you don't miss any uploads. Um, cause you want to know what's going down. You want to come and hang out. Yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to eat my breakfast. Millie made me this fire breakfast. I think she's trying to get me to live forever. I don't know, man, but, uh, I'm Benny. I'm out. Peace.